Hey guys, what's up and welcome to today's video. We are going to be playing with the brand new reformulated rebranded eyeshadows from Makeup Geek. Now I just got this in the mail about a week ago, I would say. I haven't really had a chance to play with them. I have done a little bit of swatching, but that's about it. I have been waiting to sit down on camera to try these shadows with you guys and give you a real true first impressions. This is a nine pan collection of shadows. As you can see, things have changed a bit here. These pans are now square shaped in comparison to the older palette, the traditional, holding that weird, round shaped pans. This is the Warm Tones palette. $32.99 is the retail. Now Makeup Geek you can get through their website directly and I know they are starting to carry some of the shadows. I don't know if all of them, but I know some of the four pan little quads you can definitely get at Target. So we are gonna go ahead and go over some swatches, ultimately create a look together. So with that being said, let's just jump right into it. So I did go ahead and swatch this palette for you guys. These swatches are quite impressive. The mattes absolutely beautiful. They feel buttery smooth. This is just one swipe from each shadow. They aren't built up at all, but I will say the foiled shadows in this, this shade here, these two, and then this one right here, absolutely gorgeous. Now I did swatch the original nude palette that I had that I purchased several months ago. Very similar swatches, but I do have to say that the mattes are a little bit more richly pigmented in the newer palette that I have. Obviously that could be because these shadows are brand new, but nonetheless, I just wanted to show you guys the difference here. Both are very beautiful. Let's go ahead and create a look together. These are neutral warm tones. It shouldn't be too difficult to come up with something. These shadows are right up my ass. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom you guys in and let's create a look together. So my eyes are prepped and ready to go with some of the Jeffree Star Magic Star Concealer. Then I kind of set that down with the Laura Mercier Translucent Setting Powder. These types of shadows are my all time favorite, which is why I ultimately went with this collection. There are some others that include colors that are a little bit more bright, a little bit more fun, but these are colors that I would reach for each and every single day. So I'm really excited here. I'm gonna start off with this Alter Ego brush. This is a number Number three and I'm gonna dip into this lighter shade right here just to kind of lay down a base I love larger eyeshadow brushes like this because it like pretty much takes up my entire eye and just allows me with one ooh, there's quite a bit of kick up here one quick swipe to just kind of set everything down and to create a nice base for other shadows to blend into. I'm gonna take my Sonia G, this is a crease two brush, and I'm going to dip into this shade right here, this caramely brown. Now all the shade names are listed on the back of each pan. These are magnetic, so they do pop out. I'm just gonna start off by putting that right into the crease. I mentioned this brush in my monthly favorites video that I just uploaded. I think it was like two videos ago. If you have hooded eyes, you will love this brush. By no means is it a cheap brush, but with the way that it blends shadow, ugh, so worth it. Now that blended out beautifully. It took very little effort. Obviously I am using a fantastic brush, but it seems to be pairing well with this particular shadow. Everything is blending out quite nicely with very little effort. What I like about this so far is that this matte shade isn't making my eyes look dry. I do tend to have drier eye area, and with the fact that this is a matte shade and it's not going on dry or chalky, it's looking very nice, smooth, and plush. I do want to build that up just a little bit more. I'm going to go with more of a tapered brush. This is a LR110 shadow brush. I can't think of it for the life of me the name of these brushes. I just got them in an Ipsy bag and I love them. I'm just gonna focus this a little bit more on the crease, just building up this shade just a little bit. You do not need much shadow at all. I'm literally just going boom, boom, right in the pan and then focusing that right in the crease. Perfect, so everything is built up to the depth that I would like it to be built up. I'm gonna go back in with this original brush that I used to lay down my base shade. I'm just gonna lightly go over the edges just to make sure nothing is harsh. Voila. I'm gonna take this Alter Ego number one brush. I'm gonna dip into this warmer brown shade right here. I'm gonna use that to kind of deepen up the outer part of the eye. 
I'm gonna work that just into the crease very slightly, but keeping this very tight on the lid. Do you have to comment so far that I am extremely impressed with the way that these shadows are blending out on my lids. Everything looks very soft and flush and beautiful, and I'm not having a hard time working with them at all. So I'm gonna deepen up things even more so on this outer edge here. I'm gonna dip into this even more deep, warm brown shade. I feel like this, this, and this. These three shades just work so beautifully together. In fact, all of the shades that I have laid down so far just work beautifully. By no means do you need to use this many shadows to create a look. For the purpose of a review and a true first impressions, I do wanna to try to build up as many shadows as I can to really show you guys how these work. Look how beautiful that is. It's so like these are colors that I could just wear every single day. Smoke it out, obviously this is a bit smoky, but this is looking so beautiful. These are blending just effortlessly. Now I do need to decide what I kinda wanna put all over the lid. I'm very tempted to just keep everything very dark and to lay this down, or do I wanna keep it all matte and just put this all over the lids? I think I'm gonna go for the metallic though because these foiled shades are so gorgeous. I'm just gonna go ahead and lay that all over the lid. It looks like it's glowing. So beautiful. So I'm gonna use my finger and just blend that into the deeper shadow that I laid down on the outer part of the eye. Very pretty. I'm gonna go back in with the Alter Ego number one brush and I'm gonna dip back into this shade right here. Just gonna run that through the crease just to kind of redeepen everything up and to re-blend. Just want to keep that definition. Gorgeous. Let's go ahead and work on the lower lash line. Take this shade right here with that same L. What is this? The R110. I keep this very close and focus this on the outer part of the eye and drag it about halfway in. just can't get over how beautiful these shadows blend. Like, wow, so beautiful. They just pop. They just frame the eyes so, so effortlessly. Cleaned off and sticking with that same brush again, I'm gonna dip into this lighter shade right here. And I'm gonna use that on the rest of the lower lash line and just blend it right into that deeper shade. And I'm gonna use it underneath just to really make sure everything looks nice and buffed out. Now my only beef with this palette is that there is no inner corner or brow bone highlight shade in this with the exception of this matte shade right here. We are going to go ahead and use it, but I feel like this palette would have benefited from maybe just a lighter tone somewhere in the palette, something that was just slightly lighter than this. In fact, maybe I would have just completely swapped this shade out and put in more of like a warm icy champagne shade that could even double as a highlight or something on the inner corner under the brow bone type deal. I take this Morphe M508 and I am going to dip into that white shade and just use that as the highlight. I'm just someone who prefers more of a metallic shadow in the inner corner of the eye. I'm peeling so bad and it's going into my hair, so I'm sorry if you guys can see that. If you didn't know already, I just recently got back from Florida and I did burn and I was terrible and I didn't wear sunscreen and I did get a little bit of a burn and I'm peeling, so it's kind of going into my hair, so I'm really sorry if that's annoying. I am going to hop off camera. I'm gonna pop some liner in the waterline, pop on some mascara, and I will be back with my final thoughts on the new Makeup Geek shadows. All right, you guys, so there you have it. This is the completed look using the Warm Tones palette from Makeup Geek. I do have to say that I am extremely impressed with the formulation of these shadows. These are by far probably some of the best matte shadows that I have ever used. I know I say that a lot, but I feel like the more that makeup advances, the more launches that we're seeing, the more technology that there is, the more the industry itself is learning, the better products are becoming. And I'm hoping that bad products are going to become few and further between, almost like a thing of the past. There really isn't an excuse, in my opinion, for bad 
product. We have the technology to create products that are fantastic and products that just work. This eye look is just absolutely stunning. I could rock something like this each and every single day. I feel like my eyes look beautiful. The foiled shade is just gorgeous. The mattes blended beautifully. I would definitely say it's worth checking out these shadows. Like I said, you do have the option to purchase the shadows individually. You can purchase the nine pan collections. You can build your own. You can purchase the little quads. Whatever fits your budget if you are interested in trying these out. Even picking up maybe just a couple of singles like these two shades shades right here or these three or even boom 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 those four shades absolutely beautiful each shade name is listed on the website so if you look up this particular collection of shadows you will find the name of each individual pan they are also on the back of each shadow as well. So for example, this one right here is Honey Badger, and it's one of my favorite shades in the entire nine shadow collection. I love a caramely, warm toned pre-shade. It reminds me of, what is it? There's that one shade in the Chocolate Bar palette from Too Faced. Is it just called Caramel? I can't remember, but it looks just like that, and it is so beautiful, and I absolutely love it. It's one of those shades you can just sweep into the crease and all over the lid, and boom, just be done and have a beautiful, simple daytime look. So there you guys have it. That is my consensus on the Makeup Geek rebrand. I think the shadows are beautiful and definitely worth checking out. Give this video a huge thumbs up if you liked it, share it, and of course, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel before you go. Love you guys so, so much, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye, guys.